What is up guys? Sleep Deprived Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be going over the complete guide for how to get the brand new Divinity Exotic Raid Trace Rifle just added into Destiny 2 with the Shadow Keep expansion. And so let's get started. Now first things first, let's take a quick look at this brand new weapon so that you guys know if you even want to get it. Firstly, it has the exotic intrinsic perk Judgment. Sustained damage with this weapon envelop the target in a field that weakens and disrupts them. It also has another unique perk, Penance. Targets under the effect of Judgment long enough are struck with a burst of damage. Now this weapon is incredibly unique. Not only does it do pretty decent damage, but the damage isn't the point. The point is that as you're shooting this at a target, it actually takes more damage from all sources. So if you're in a raid scenario, if you're in a DPS scenario, one person using this can increase the damage of all your teammates, and you can see that in action right here. As I shoot this nightmare target, it's actually going to get kind of a vex field effect around it, and when I shoot it with my rocket launcher without it, does 40,000 damage, I hit it with the divinity, it gets that effect, I quickly swap over, shoot it again, 50,000 damage, and it's hitting for a crit this time. And that is a very powerful and very unique effect. So, how do you get it? This all begins on the moon, so travel to Soros Harbor and head to the bottom right hand corner of that map. There's going to be a bridge, as you can see here, travel over it, keep going, and eventually you will get to the area where you start the raid. Like if you load up the brand new Garden of Salvation raid, you will start in this area, but you're going to travel there in the public event space, and if you do, there's going to be a bunch of Vex enemies that spawn. You're going want to kill every single one of them. There's going to be even more that spawn out of the gate. You keep killing them until eventually a special gate lord enemy spawns. It's going to be a big bad named boss enemy. You kill this guy and then he's actually going to drop, well, an exotic engram, but it's not really an exotic engram. If you pick it up, it will give you the first exotic quest step to get this weapon. So, if you go into your pursuits and look at this quest step, you have Vex Core Analyzed 0%. So, how do you fill this up? Well, you're going to travel to Nessus, and there's going to be specifically three lost sectors on that planet that you're going to have to go to and find the Vex Cores. And the first one is going to be on Artifact's Edge. So travel there, go into the only Lost Sector available to do there, and it appears that the Lost Sector itself, like completing it, killing the final boss, getting the chest, that's all irrelevant. It's just going into there and finding a secret passageway where you have this Vex Core. And for this one specifically, it's going to be a little passageway along the main hallway to get to the boss fight, as you can see. So if you head in there and analyze this core, you're actually going to get unauthorized access detected pop up, and a few enemies will spawn, so kill them, and then you're going to have to just go back and scan it again. This will give you progress towards your quest step. Moving on from there, the next lost sector you're going to need to go to is in the Tangle area. So head there and pretty soon after just entering this lost sector, as you can see, the Vex core is off in a little cave. The same thing is going to happen where it's unauthorized access, you have to kill a few enemies, and then you have to scan it again. And this is going to happen for the third one as well. And speaking of the third one, you're going to head to the cistern area of Nessus and you're going to go to the lost sector underneath the waterfall as you can see here. And upon entering the main area where enemies are spawning, you kind of stop, head up and to the right, there's somewhere you can jump on and there's a little hidden passageway as well which has the final Vex core you need to scan. Now, at this point, your quest step is going to update and you're going to have a new objective. Decryption core repaired, 0 out of 120. So that means you're going to have to kill Vex on the moon. And the best way to do that is to be involved with a Vex invasion. And if you look at the map of the moon, you can actually see which areas are capable of being affected by a Vex invasion. But what you want to do is actually look around for a public event. The timing works out such that 
a few minutes after a public event, like one or two minutes, then a VEX invasion is likely to start. If you just wait around there when there's no public event, eventually a VEX invasion will start, but you could be waiting a while. So the easiest way, again, look for a public event, head there, you can do the public event or stand around and activate heroic or not, it doesn't really matter, and then start waiting and you will see the sky really start to change in effect. You're gonna see a massive kind of Vex portal open up and Vex will start literally falling from the sky. This is what you wanna be involved in. And so just go and slay ads. But a quick tip here, Often with these waves, there's going to be lots of Vex that are spawning, and then a few bosses will spawn. If you kill those bosses, then it's going to go to a different area of the map, and more Vex will spawn there out of kind of a new portal. You can get much more of these items for yourself out of your 120 if you focus on killing all of the smaller ads before killing the bosses, because actually that's going to make more ads spawn and so on. So kill all the smaller guys, then focus on the bosses, go to the next portal, do the same thing, do the same thing, do the same thing, and in likely one Vex invasion, you will get all 120 pieces. And at this point, your quest step is going to update yet again, and now you have Core Empowered. So, you actually want to head over to Sanctuary, right beside Eris Morn, interact with the Lectern of Enchantment. And you can see you can just buy the exotic component from that. But, you're going to need 30 Phantasmal Fragments, and you get Phantasmal Fragments from almost always killing nightmare enemies. So if you don't have enough, what you can do is go to Sorrow's Harbor. That's where a ton of nightmare enemies are gonna spawn. So kill those guys, grab the chests that they uh, uh, let you grab after killing all of them, like farm that, or you can buy them directly also from this Lectern of Enchantment for 25 Helium Filaments. So if you don't wanna farm for them, you can just spend all of your resources, or remember you can go to the spider in the Tangled Shore if he's selling helium filaments, you can stock up on those, then come back here and just buy a bunch, buy all 30, and then you can purchase the exotic component. Now, after you do that, very importantly, you're going to have to immediately go a little bit to the side and talk to Eris Morn. She's going to say, hey, interesting looking artifact, go and do the raid. And then you're going to have to go and do the raid. The entire Garden of Salvation raid in one sitting. The way it works is that there's six hidden puzzles and you have to do all of them in one playthrough. If you do two and then go do something else and then fly back in another day and do the last four, it won't work. You have to do all six in one run. Luckily for you guys, I just put out my complete raid guide. So check that out if you wanna know how to beat this brand new raid and you will need to beat it. Like you can't just go in and all six puzzles are in the opening area. The final chest to get this weapon will be at the very end for beating the last encounter. So you will need to know how to do everything. In any event, you're going to load up this raid and upon heading through that Vex portal on the moon and just landing in the Black Garden, stop and there's a very large pit behind you. Now you're actually gonna to want to jump off this pit and just underneath, there's a little thing you can interact with. This is where you present the empowered decryption core, which you just empowered with the Lectern of Enchantment. So interact with that, and that's actually going to enable all of the different puzzles to be solved. So, after doing this, head towards the arena that the first encounter takes place, but stop at the top of these stairs, and off to the left and the right, there's a little hidden passageways you can go in. This is the very first puzzle you need to do. One of those sides, one of those passageways, leads to a little box where the tethers start. And if you're familiar with the raid mechanics, you know all about the tether and connecting it from one box to the little device that opens things. Well, again, one side has the box and the other side opposite to it has the little device it needs to connect to. So using all six people, you need to connect that tether from the box over to the other side to the device. So, your team should be aligned as such. The box up one level to one person, up another level to another person, then to a third person near a window. From there, across the stairs to the other room, you can see there's another window, so from that person's window 
down to another person, down to another person, to the object. It's basically symmetry. Figure out how to connect it from the box to someone standing near the window and do the same thing on the other side, except not to the box, to the object. And that's it for the first puzzle. You're off to beat the first encounter and then progress to the second puzzle. Now, right after you beat that first encounter, backtrack a little bit from where the reward chest is and look for the single pink tree off to the right hand side. Right underneath there, as you can see, there is a hidden passageway which leads to the second puzzle. Now, there's kind of a large room here with a shielded off center area, but on one side of that area is going to be the box where you're going to start the tether from, and on the other side, the device. And you can also see these kind of glowing holes, which show that you have to transfer through this little hole from one side of the room to the other to get it to where it needs to be. So, you can kind of see the root of the tether right here. It's going to start at the box, go to True Vanguard, then it's going to go to Josh, then it goes to Mtash who is standing right next to the first kind of window, the first hole. That goes to Bananas, which then goes through the slit to me. You can see when I turn, it connects to someone in that second window, in that second hole, and from them to the object you need to complete. Now, this arrangement to get there, you're gonna have to, similar to the other puzzle, split your team up on either side of this room. That shielded area prevents you from passing through and easily going to either side of this area. So you're gonna have to do kind of what you see me do in the background gameplay and go down this route across this little chasm and that brings you to the edge of the cliff essentially. You jump from platform to platform along this edge and then you can make your way in the backside to the other part of the room. So you're going to split your team up kind of similar to last time, you know, three and three and make that connection across like through that little gap that you saw from one side of this area with the box to the other side with the object. All right, continuing on from there, as you progress towards the second encounter, you're going to find the third puzzle for the divinity. So, in this area right here, when you have a bunch of the lily pads essentially that you can jump on, the kind of forested area, what you're going to need to do is go to these diamonds here. There's going to be six diamonds, and essentially what you need to do is run the tether through all six of these objects. When all six are ran through and they will be glowing when the tether is going through them, then you will complete this puzzle. But the main step to overcoming this is the fact that the tether is going to connect to kind of the nearest person. So if you kind of just all stand, it's gonna go in every which direction. So you want to shoot the tether connected to the first person. Then whoever gets connected next goes in position. Then the tether is going to connect to someone else. That person then goes into position. So get connected, then move into position rather than being in position and then trying to tether all six people at once. And you can see the correct positions to stand in the background gameplay. All right, now moving on from there, you're actually going to need to complete the second and then the third encounter. And that's because the second encounter kind of unlocks the area in which the third encounter mainly takes place. They both take place kind of in that same arena. So after the third encounter, once you've killed a raid boss, you will have two more puzzles to do. Now for the first one, we have the box right here, kind of over this little edge. And you're going to have another, just like before, puzzle to connect all six of these glowing diamonds. And again, positioning is everything. You can kind of see the correct position in the background gameplay. You go from the box across and wrap around this pillar here. And the final person is going to have to, as you can see, be hovering in the air in order to connect those last two diamonds and complete it. And honestly, you're going to have to be hovering for a decent amount of time, so make sure whoever's playing the Warlock is that final guy so they can float a lot more easily. Now, the second puzzle that takes place in this same area is going to involve the same thing, connecting six different diamonds. But 
This one is a little bit tricky because as soon as you head over to those diamonds, a bunch of supplicants, harpies that explode, will rush to you. So for this one, you actually need to make sure that your team is in position. You're gonna need to go and collect the tether and then make sure that you're in position before going over the six diamonds. If you collect the tether and then just try to go straight to the diamonds, as you're arranging yourselves, you'll probably die. So it's a lot more efficient to do it this way. So head back to the box, then start it and connect all six people. This is going to, as you can see, kind of light you up and make the tether just constantly bounce in between all six of you. You don't need to be connected to the box anymore. So you can travel as a group, like stay close together, to just outside of this hallway, as you can see us go, then you're gonna have to form kind of, I would say a rectangle or a square with two people in the middle kind of pinching in. So somewhat like an hourglass shape. Then you're going to walk in that shape already pre-made over to the diamonds as you can see us do and just get it done really quickly. And so when it is done again, you can see those supplicants show up. They kill a few of us, but we've already completed it. Okay, so as you progress forward from there, you're eventually going to happen upon these massive Vex waterfalls. Here is where two more puzzles take place. So you're actually going to head, as you can see me head, into the secret cave underneath the waterfalls. Of course, every gamer knows you gotta check the waterfalls for hidden stuff. And under here, you're going to see yet another box, but you're gonna have a lot more objects around the floor. We're gonna deal with that puzzle in a sec, but first you kind of need to power this puzzle. So you're gonna connect all six people leading from this box up to the object, which is kind of hidden, as you can see where I go and show you guys, uh, off to the corner. So you just connect the tether to that object. Once that object activates, you go back to where the box that started the tether is, and then you gotta do a much more complicated puzzle. So how this puzzle works is as such. You have the box, and then very close by, you have the object it needs to connect to. But the six glowing objects on the ground are the key. You have to connect through these six little platforms in the correct order, for the correct pathway. And to accomplish this, you need to line up from position number one to position number two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna have to label yourselves, all six people have a dedicated number and position, and line up from one right near the box in a row with six just before the object. That's gonna connect all six people in order, and then you can arrange yourselves from position one to position six on the platforms. And the platforms should be labeled as such. You can see this image with all six here. One is at the kind of bottom left, and then two, three, jumping over to four, five, six. So line up from one to six, get the tether, go into those positions I just showed you. So first guy who got the tether, who's at the front, goes to position number one, etc., And then it'll go all the way around, touching all six of those objects. And as you can see, that's gonna trigger the puzzle. And then it's going to keep showing you different arrangements, different pathways. You need to align yourselves in order to accomplish these pathways. So I'm gonna kind of go in depth and explain this first example because it can be a little complicated. So we're in that first order from one to six, that should be easy, and then you see the pathway change. The line shows where you now need to be. We still have going from the box to number one. So number one stays the same, but then as you can see, kind of two and six have switched positions. So it goes to number one, then goes out to the distance, then goes back. So I'm at position two, I clearly see it's hitting number one, and then the number two position, the person it should be hitting next, which is me, I'm number two, has changed, I head over there. Whoever is in number three, which happens to be True Vanguard, he knows he's connecting to me, so he switches to where I was, and everyone shuffles around, and then you can see we made that connection. So that is actually the most important thing. If you can just follow the person in front of you, I'm always following where number one goes. Number three is always following where I number two goes and it keeps going because you can really easily see kind of where it goes from the box to the first platform it hits. So whoever's number one has a really easy job of seeing, okay, this is where it starts. 
they arrange themselves, and then you just need to look at where it goes from there, and then just go in a line. And you can also somewhat track backwards, because if you're the last position, so six, five, and four, number six can really, really easily see where it ends, because it goes to, from one of the platforms to the end point. So they just go to that final point super easily. Number five can look where they are and just go, okay, well, you know, he's at the end point. I need to have the line going to him. So I'm just here. And then number four as well. So you can either follow the leader or have one, two, and three all following one and line up super easily. And then four, five, and six all following six. Like six knows where to go. One knows where to go really easily. Those are kind of your anchors and the rest of your players are looking at them and lining themselves up appropriately. In any event, once you do solve a bunch of those pathways, then you're gonna get the little text appear in the corner of your screen that you've completed it and you move on. But that's actually it for the puzzles. You've completed all six. And the last thing you're going to need to do is beat the final encounter. Once you do, you head down to the reward area and there's going to be instead of one chest, two chests. The first chest is going to open automatically and give you your raid reward. And the second one is going to give you the Divinity Exotic Trace Rifle. So you will actually have to interact with that second chest. It won't just give it to you automatically. So make sure you head down there and press interact on it. Also, apparently it can kind of spew out the reward. So if you're not standing right next to it or if you interact with it and then back away, you can kind of roll down a hill apparently. So just stand right next to the chest and you should get it no problem. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.